Okay. And I think we're all set and I'll, I was going to share the legal ad. To start. Okay, so while you do that, I will welcome people to the Amherst Historical Commission public hearing and public meeting on June 24th, 2020 at 5 p.m based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law uh, signed March 12th, 2020. This hearing and meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. My name is Jane Wald and as the chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, uh, I'm calling this meeting to order at whatever time it is, 504. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as normal. So I'll, uh, I'll now take a roll call of uh, commission members present. So uh, members, is your, your name called? Uh, just answer affirmatively. Um, Patricia Off. Present. Robin Fordham. Present. Janet Marquardt. Present. Jane Scheffler. Jane, you might Jane, need you have, have to unmute yourself. You did, yeah. Present. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. And the video on, too. You can oh, I didn't only. Okay. Uh, Hetty okay. Scott. Okay. Present. Okay. And Jane Wald, I'm present, too. Um, let's see. An opportunity for public comment will be provided during the general public comment period and at other appropriate times through throughout the meeting. Um, uh, but please be aware that the commission will not respond to comments during the general public comment period, which comes later on the agenda. If guests wish to make a comment during a, during a public comment period or during a hearing, you must join the meeting via the Zoom teleconferencing link, which can be found through the town calendar listing for this meeting. Uh, please indicate you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise, raise hand button when public comment is solicited. If you have joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your phone. When called on, uh, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes and at the discretion of the commission chair. So, um, now uh, we'll move into a public hearings uh, for three, uh, with three requests for uh, demolition permits. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 15th order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, uh, this public hearing of the town of Amherst Historical Commission is being conducted by a remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public is permitted, but the public can listen to the proceedings by clicking uh, the link on the town's uh, webpage. Uh, in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Laws Chapter 40A and Article 13, demolition delay of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw this public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. The Amherst Historical Commission is holding these public hearings to provide an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding the following demolition application requests. One from 30 Fearing Street uh, from Martha Jameson, a request to demolish a uh, circa 1930 attached one car garage and extent exterior renovations to the house. Um, 300 North Pleasant Street, historic renovations, uh, request to demolish a circa 1880 post and beam building behind the main house. And 117 Amity Street, a request from Susan Haas uh, for partial demolition of a circa 1927 attached garage. So in each of these cases, I'll open a public hearing um, we'll hold discussion and off, offer opportunity for public comment, and then I'll close the public hearing, at which point members of the Historical Commission 
will deliberate on the criteria set out in Article 13 of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw and take a vote on the disposition of the demolition application. And so we'll go through each of the three uh, demolition application requests in that way. So we'll begin with uh, 30 Fearing Street, a uh, request from Martha Jameson to demolish uh, circa 1930 attached one car garage and exterior renovations. And if I could call on um, the applicant, if yeah. Sure, yeah. I was, um, so just so everyone else knows, for the attendees, the if you'd like to raise your hand, you can hover over your name or maybe then to the right there is a, um, a button to raise hand to speak. And then as each application is being presented, we'll promote the applicant or representatives to, um, to a panelist so that way then you can speak freely with the commission. And so if the public has any comments, you can continue to raise um, your hand. So Martha, I'm going to promote you to panelist. I'm going to share the, um, the application. Let's do that. Ah, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. It's always nice when technology works. <laughs> I think for the commission, I think the helpful piece is the, uh, here's a narrative, but let me just go down to the, the following pages just so people can see the, the garage. So here's some other pictures. Martha, so usually we, you know, we, as Jane said, we'd like the applicant just to describe the project. Okay. Well, as you can see, the, if you continue to flip through the garage pages, the garage is not in usable condition. And um, it is a sort of strange structure. It's a single story with this sort of higher wall on the back and one side, but not on the side facing the neighbors. And the, the floor, sort of roof slash floor there is tilted. So everything drains off toward the neighbors. Um, I can't begin to tell you what they had in mind. It's certainly not a roof terrace, but uh, in any case, because the garage is very small and in pretty bad condition, there's a lot of water damage in the corner you see. Uh, it attaches to the house in this picture and the wooden doors have long since ceased to function as they were planned to do. We would like to pull it down and reside the then exposed part of the back of the house with stucco and add a substantial number of windows. Um, if you're familiar with this house at all, you know that there's a spectacular tulip tree in the backyard, and it would be great to be able to see that tree from inside the house, which is what this would allow. Otherwise, there's really no view into the backyard. So that is what we're trying to accomplish. And does anyone have any questions? So just you know, for the commission's benefit, if you can see the uh, the PDF in red is the is the garage. I just mm -hmm. drew that. So the 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 higher walls are where if you can see the mouse. You know, the, this is the driveway. You zoom out and pull it down a little bit. Here's the driveway here, and then you come in behind the house, and the higher walls are here, and then to the south, and the tulip tree. That was discussed as here. It really is actually a, it's one of probably one of the largest tulip trees in Massachusetts uh, in, in this prop on this property. And so, you know, what's being demolished is not part of the main house, but this this garage right here. So if we go back to the pictures, right, Martha, as I understand, it's, it's just this garage. Yes, you're completely correct. And then, uh, you know, one other piece, sorry, just to, um, you know, once they take down the garage, they're going to, there'll be some uh, windows and doors put in, but that's, you know, there's no, that's not part of the review because it's, you know, part of the garage where the garage was. Well, it's not visible from the street anyway. Correct. Right. Uh, when I walk by today, you can see the garage doors from the street. Well, I mean, if they put windows and doors on the back of the house. Yes, right. That is all right. Um, the addendum says that it's a maple tree. 
I think it was misidentified as a. Okay. Um, any other information from from you, Nate? I mean, you know, there's the, the there's the narrative that was provided, and I don't I don't I don't, I don't have any more. I mean, I do think the garage is an odd, it's an odd, uh, whether or not it's contemporary, it's an odd style, the way they built it. And if it was ever modified to try to have a roof deck on top, it's just, it's an odd um, configuration. So, yeah. you know, I don't have anything else to add than what was put in the narrative there. Okay. Oh, I, there was one little curious thing in the, in the narrative um, about, uh, restrictions on the property, uh, I think mostly having to do with the addition of outbuildings or utilities. That was, that was interesting. There's an easement on the far, the, uh, well, in the picture you're looking at, it would be to the left uh, for access of utilities to Dora Fearing's house that is uh, accessed from a different street. That's the, the building sort of directly behind. To the best of my knowledge, that easement is not being used, but it is not something that we'd be touching in working on the garage. Right, I think if you can see the mouse somewhere back here, in the back third of the property, there's an easement over the property, but it's not involved with the, the, the house or the garage. Yeah. I believe the easement actually runs from Fearing Street straight back on the left border. Oh, does it? Because I think there's two. The line across the middle there was explained to me by someone, someone in the assessor's office, whom I believed, uh, said that there was a, an application at one time to subdivide the property, and that was going to be the line, but the application was never persisted, so uh, the property was not subdivided, but the okay. line still shows on the plan. At least that's what was explained to me when we were buying. No, no, you were right, right, right. That might be a former property line and not an easement line. Yeah. That's my understanding. Okay. Thank the you. Easement, it's funny, the easement, yeah, doesn't show up on our assessor's information. <laughs> yeah, I learned about it from the neighbors. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, all right. Any other um, questions or comments from commission members? No. Uh, so I think we're probably ready to uh, to deliberate on this. So I guess I need to have a motion to close the public hearing. I move we close the public hearing and start um, looking at the standards for designation. Okay. I second. All right, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, for this purpose, Nate, let me ask you uh, if we're, as we look through the designations um, as a significant structure, is the structure considered to be the house, including the garage or the structure in this case considered to be the garage only? I would say both. Okay. There, it's an attached garage. Yeah. And I, I will mention that the th this is also in the local historic district, so that you know the the local historic district commission is reviewing this project next week as well. So it's a you know the demolition process is separate from local historic district review. So there's two two reviews happening for this project. Okay. And for those. Uh, for, for Martha, for your benefit and for the uh, others who may be listening in, um, according to the current bylaw, uh, the Historical Commission first determines uh, whether a structure should be designated as a significant structure. And then following that finding of whether or not it, uh, it should be designated as a significant structure, the uh, members of the commission then vote on the disposition of the demolition application. In other words, um, 
a significant structure. Um, its significance may uh, 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 convince the, the historic commission to um, that the demolition delay should be in order, but the commission may also decide that its significance does not affect um, the outcome, that the demolition permit should proceed. Um, okay, so uh, in this case, uh, we can determine that a structure be designated as a significant structure if it meets one or more of the following criteria. First and foremost is uh, whether it's listed on the National Register of Historic Places uh, is with, or is within an area listed on the National Register of Historic Places or is the subject of a pending application for listing on the National Register. So um, this is both part of a local historic district and a national registered district. Is that correct? Is it the is it in the Lincoln? Is it in or adjacent? I was just going to verify that right now. I thought it was outside of it. But let me. Uh... Well, then which local historic district is also looking at it next week? Well, there's one district commission. And so they look at, you know, any, within any, um, so this is in the Lincoln, you know, sunset, but it's, you know, that, so it's not in a national register district. So the Lincoln, the local historic district covering Lincoln sunset is bigger than the national register district. Mm -hmm. so, so it'll it's not in a national register but in a local historic district okay so 13.40 is no is no correct oh that's correct yeah uh, it's not, not it's not the national register it's just the local right okay so then we move on to criteria about historical importance architectural importance and geographic importance um and if uh if any of the subheads under each of three, these three designations, if the commission votes uh, yes on any of the three subheads, uh, then it is considered, a, then we will have determined that it's a significant structure. So we can begin with historical importance. And um, I think, let's see, I think maybe we should because this is virtual and I can't see everybody on the screen at once, probably I will need to just, you know, call your name and ask you to, to indicate yes or no for each of these. Um, so uh, the structure, uh, do you consider that it has character, interest, or value as part of the development, heritage, or cultural characteristics of the town of Amherst, Commonwealth, or the nation? Um, so I'll go in order and ask Pat for your for your determination. I think if we're looking at the garage, which is the focus for the demolition request, I would say no. Okay. Uh, Robin, um, can you come back to me? I need. I'm trying to pull up the criteria here. Okay. Um, the the criteria should be on the screen share. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna. Uh, okay. Uh, so come back to me. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, Jan? Uh, I think we're, we decided we're talking about garage and house together, even though we'll make a determination well, of the garage. I mean, I guess that's a discussion for the commission. I mean, I do think the garage, although it looks somewhat contemporary to the house, it is somewhat distinct in its style and it's set back from the road, but it is attached. I mean, I guess that's, you know, if that's something the commission, I, I mean, the commission could discuss that before going through the criteria, is it really the house in the garage is one or can, can we separate out the garage? Well, um, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't determine, for instance, that the house as a unit is a significant structure and then make a decision that we allow, for instance, the garage to be demolished because it isn't contributing towards that. It's yeah. always good to have on record if we think something's significant that we've voted that it is. Right. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, I my thought is that they're it's attached, and so it's really one structure. Yeah. Is, are there any are there any drawings um, of the house that show the footprint that would include a garage? 
Does anybody know? I mean, I, 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 I'm kind of very curious about these storybook Tudor revival houses in the, in the town. And I just wondered, Nate, if you knew how many there were of them. Um, uh, this, 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 this whole um, issue seems to be that we're dealing with a house, a, a site that has been hugely important in the town and the house is significant architecturally. And then we've got this garage, which we don't even know was built when the house was built and doesn't really kind of, it doesn't really visually or design wise conform to the rest of the house. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really lost as to how I'm supposed to evaluate the criteria here because if you ask me to evaluate the house and the garage together, it will, I will make certain determinations. And, and if I'm just doing the garage, then I can say something else. But I, I think we're off. I, I, that's the track I was on. Yeah. And I had the, some of the same questions you have, Hetty. I think the house is significant. But the garage doesn't seem like it's original to the design of the house to me. And so the question is, is, is it, was it? Um, but it, the absence of it wouldn't detract from the importance of the house, in my opinion. Um, I don't, I, I just weighing in, I, I struggle with the idea of seeing an attached garage as separate from the overall structure and voting for something to be historic doesn't necessarily impose a delay. Those are two different things. So I would, I would argue for it being one structure because it's attached, regardless of the fact that it was added on or it may have been added on. Uh, I, so this is Jane. I, um, I agree with that view that it, 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 it's attached. It's part of the structure unless we know that it's it has, uh, was built at a different time. And I don't think we know that for this particular garage. Why would we view it as a, as a separate structure just because it was built at a different time? Does that mean any addition is considered a separate structure to the structure? <laughs> no, but it's not part of the dwelling, I guess is how I differentiated. And, and the architecture just doesn't seem consistent with the house that has very specific Yeah, I mean, that's not, the, that's not really the point I'm making. I'm just seeing it as one, it's one unit. I'm, I mean, it, it's, it's more of a global question than a question about this specific house that would seem to suggest to me that any house that has an addition on it, the addition counts as a different structure, which doesn't seem well, it depends if it's part of the dwelling and the, it, the, a garage is not for dwelling, a house is for dwelling. And I'm, I may be, you know, cut, splitting hairs here. Yeah. <laughs> should <they> split? <laughs> but I'm trying to make sense of it for myself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I'm, st I'm still going to hold to the view that it's all together, uh, one structure. I think ultimately, it doesn't really matter because it's not going to affect true. our final <laughs> We're just either going to designate the house as significant or we're going to, we're not going to, but we're still going to make a determination about the garage coming down separately. I agree. Yep. Okay. So I think we've, this has been a good discussion and I think we're ready to decide whether we uh, consider it as a unit, including house and garage or separate them out. So um, I think this is, I'm not sure that we need a formal vote for this, but why don't we see if we have arrived at a consensus about it. Um, uh, so I have a sense of what Bob and this, Robin's position. I, think. I mean, I would say one unit, but I'll go either way for the sake of. I agree with one unit. I, I tend to agree. I agree with it being one unit. And I um, would take the house as having importance and the garage as being incidental to the house. I think to Jan's point, though, is that the commission can go through the criteria, even if this is considered one structure, and then 
you know, even if it's considered significant, determine that a demolition isn't detrimental, is not detrimental, and so that it can be, it can proceed. So, you know, even if the house is, even if this whole unit's found to be significant, demolition can still be allowed. I think, for me, that would be, a, 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 I would recommend that way, just so that we're not, you know, it's clear, you know, because it is, it is attached. I mean, if this garage were, if it were set off from the house and it was clearly distinct, it could be easier to make that, you know, have this discussion, but because it is attached, an attached garage that is at least, you know, um, it's in the 1956 aerial, so it's at least, you know, it's, it's at least 70 probably years old. It's a, you know, it could be, it could have been built at the time of the house and then modified. It's really hard to say for sure, but it is an older piece of, piece of the house. Is, does anyone know if there's a door that goes from the garage into the back of the house? Um, is it possible to ask Martha Jamison that question? Um, I think we're, I really think we need to continue voting. I think we've okay. had, sorry, Jane. We've, we've had a chance to ask questions. So. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, so let's, let's go back. Let's consider it a single unit um, and continue with the uh, criteria and Nate, I I've lost the screen share. Oh, sorry. Yeah, let me. Um, where am I now? Is, can okay. see? is it? Is that? Is it viewable now? The criteria. Yeah, I can see it. I, I can see it. Okay. For some reason, I can't. But I'll just pull up. I have a copy that I'll just pull up. Um, uh, so we were uh, at the point, I think Pat had voted on. Uh, Without separating out the garage, maybe we just go through it again, just to yeah. be clear. Sorry. And with historical importance. Okay, uh, has character interest or value as part of the development heritage or cultural characteristics of the town of Amherst, Commonwealth or the nation? So Pat, we'll go back to you. And, and I'm in a loop here. I believe the house, I would say absolutely yes. If we're considering it as a unit, then I think the answer is yes. Um, Robin? Yes. Jan? Yes, I think it shows um, the fact that it's been split. The lot was split into pieces as part of the um, development of the town and the style, I think shows some of the heritage and cultural development of the town architecture that'll come become more important later but i think yes okay. thank you jane uh yes i would agree yes Patty. yes thank you and i too um vote well, yes um is the site of an historic event um we'll just keep going i um we're not a Nate. We are not aware of that. It is right. Not, nothing. Of, nothing apparent. Okay. Um, then we'll just go through this one quickly. Pat. Um. It, it, no. Robin. No. Jan. No. Jane. No. Eddie. No. And no for me too. Um, is identified with a person or group of persons who had some influence on society. Uh, and we'll mix this up a little. Uh, let's start with you, Robin. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> no. Jane? No. Eddie? No. No for me and Pat. No. Uh, exemplifies the cultural, political, economic, social, or historic heritage of the community. So this is the structure itself. And we'll begin this time with Jan. I don't think so. I think 41, it expresses more than 4103. Okay. So I'd say no. Okay. Uh, Jane? I agree with Jan. Hetty? No. No for me. Uh, Pat? 
No. And Robin. Nope. Okay. Um, architectural importance. The structure meets the criteria of architectural importance if it portrays the environment of a group of people in an era of history characterized by a distinctive architectural style. Uh, Jane. Uh, I, it's, I'm gonna go with yes. Okay. Hetty. Yes. Pat. Yes. Robin. I'm leaning noish. Dan. No, I don't think so. That architectural style hasn't doesn't have anything to do with any particular group of people. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jan, is, do you mean just the garage or do you mean the house as well? The house. The house. It doesn't, we don't tie it to any particular group of people. It's not like, you know, right. the workers' cottages portray the social, you know, conditions of the workers or some particular antebellum mansion looks like a style that those, that level of people lived in. This is just a, a custom designed home that doesn't speak to any particular group of people. As it seems to me. Uh, this is Jane. I would say that I would, I, based on what Jan is saying, I would change my vote to no. Okay. You know, and, and this is Pat. I'm, I'm rereading the criteria. And, and while it's a Tudor style that we can identify, it's not characteristic of the history of Amherst. And so in, in rereading it, I, I changed my vote also. No Tudors lived there. Yeah, you know, it's, and so you know when you when you separate out its importance to our history in Amherst, it's it, it's a recognized architectural style, but it doesn't exemplify Amherst. So yes, the answer I'm changing to no. Okay, all right. Lead everyone. Sorry. And mine is no also. Okay, here's the 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 one that's always a tough one. Embodies those distinguishing characteristics of an architectural. Style. Um, and let's see, as I'm rotating through, um, <laughs> Teddy, it's, Teddy, it's your turn. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be, um, and I'm going to say yes. I, I'm really interested in these storybook Tudor revival houses in Amherst. Maybe um, someone will do their PhD on them. I, I think they're, I would bet but I don't know, but I think, they're sim I think they're symbolic of college towns and a particular kind of aesthetic um, and a particular reach into the past for authenticity and all that stuff. I mean, I, sh I shouldn't say very much, but I think I have to say yes. Okay. Um, I am going to say yes, because I think it's the, the the characteristics, the architectural um, detailing of this house is, is very characteristic of a Tudor style house. Um, Pat? Yes, for those, those same reasons. Robin? Yes. Jan? I say yes, and one of the reasons is because um, that period I think this was a romantic style that people were selecting. And I think honestly, because I grew up in Hollywood and there were a lot of them there, I think it came out of a Hollywood notion um, of, of, of a romantic, perfect domestic home. Okay. But I think yes. Okay, and Jane? Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, the next criterion, uh, about architectural importance uh, is whether it is the work of an architect, master builder, or craftsman whose individual work has influenced the development of the town. And this time, uh, oh, I guess I start. Um, no. Then Pat? Uh, I would say no. Robin? No. Jan? No. Jane? No. no. Okay. And Hetty. 
No. Okay. Um, uh, does it contain elements of architectural design, detail, materials, or craftsmanship which represents a significant innovation? And uh, Pat? No. Robin? No. Jan? No. Jane? No. Hetty? No. And no for me. All right. Um, then moving on to geographic importance, uh, it will meet this criteria if the site is part of or related to a square, park, or other distinctive area. And um, Robin. Uh, I would no. Dan? No. Jane? Well, okay, so didn't we say that it's part of the historic district, though? That's the next one, I think. Okay, I'm not, I, because they look, are, they're are, similar, and so I just want to make sure. Yeah. If, if that would be considered part of the next part, then I would say no. Okay. Um, Hetty? I think uh, maybe um, is my answer. So yes, I have to say one or the other, don't I? Yeah. Okay, on this, uh, I'm reading this sort of in the context of Square park or distinctive area that has some kind of uh, visual or landscape integrity, and um, so for that reason, I'm going to say no. Um, Pat, and for that reason, I'm also saying no. All right, and then finally, uh, the structure as to its unique location or its physical characteristics represents an established and familiar visual feature of the neighborhood, village center, or the community as a whole. And um, I kind of lost my place. I think maybe, Jan, it's nice. I think I start with you this time. OK. Um, yes, uh, I think this is where streetscape comes in. And it is a familiar feature of the streetscape in that area. OK. Jane? Yes. Okay. Hetty. Yes. Uh, Jane, the other Jane, yes. Pat? Yes. And Robin? Yes. Okay, so uh, the result is that we have found that the structure meets three criteria. The first is um, character interest uh, up in historical importance. Its character, interest, or value is part of the development, heritage, or cultural characteristics of the town. We found it meets the criterion of architectural importance because it embodies the distinguishing characteristics of an architectural type. And it meets the criterion of geographic importance because of its unique location, uh, physical characteristics, um, familiar, established and familiar visual feature of the neighborhood, uh, village center or community uh, as a whole. So um, our, our finding is that um, the commission has uh, found the house, including dwelling and garage to be a significant structure. Uh, now, um, we move on to uh, whether to um, allow a demolition permit to go forward or to uh, ask for a demolition delay. And for that, I'll take a motion. I move that we allow the back garage to be demolished um, based upon the fact that it doesn't contribute architecturally to the house at all. In fact, I think it would be an improvement. And uh, it is not visible from the street, so it would not affect the streetscape and the historic character of the house that we've discussed. Okay. Is there a second? Second. 
Okay, thank you, Jan and Pat. And um, so any uh, further discussion? And I think we're ready to vote. So Pat, we'll begin with you. And this is in the affirmative that the garage can be demolished. Okay. Correct. Yes. Okay, Robin? There we go. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dan? Yes. Jane? Yes. Okay. Hetty? Yes. And uh, I vote yes also. So, um, so thank you all. Thank, uh, uh, I want to particularly thank Martha for bringing the application forward and for um, talking with us about the house and the garage. Um, and uh, thank you for your patience as we worked our way through the requirements of the bylaw. So um, uh, we wish, wish you the best with, uh, with your plans. Thank you for both your time and attention and your verdict. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nate, is there anything that you need to add at this point about, I don't know, details or next steps or anything? No, I think this will be transmitted to, uh, you know, the building commissioner and staff, and then it still has to go through local historic district review. So there's, you know, this decision will be conveyed and then it'll, you know, <clears throat> just wait with the other, with the other decision making. Okay, great. Then, uh, so now we can um, open a public hearing for um, the application for a demolition permit for 300 North Pleasant Street um, with the request to demolish a, an 1880s post and beam building behind the main house on this, on this lot. Great. Joel, you're being promoted to panelists, so you'll be able to speak. How do I speak, Ava? I just Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi, Joel. Hi, Joel. Hi. Um, Hi. So thanks for the information about uh, about this property. Um, is, is there anything you'd like to tell the commissioners? Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Joel Greenbaum, 87 uh, Linden Ridge Road, Amherst. Um, the building in question has been the longtime veterinary clinic of Fred Reuter, and now is the veterinary clinic of um, Amherst, the Amherst Veterinary Clinic, John Rosile, who's going to be retiring uh, next month. So in full transparency, full disclosure, um, they are trying to sell the practice, which would be my... Um, preference, okay? I'd like to see the veterinary business stay in the center of town. Um, we've lost enough business already as it is. So that's my, that, that's a possibility, okay? I'm just trying to do my due diligence in case the business doesn't sell. Um, so this building, um, I've been in it multiple times with my builder friend, Mike Dennehy, who um, he's, he, his whole life, he's um, restored old buildings. And this building is in just really, really poor shape. All the floors are sagging. A lot of the floors have six inches of concrete on them. They used to wash dogs inside the building. Um, it's in poor, poor condition. Um, something that I wouldn't feel comfortable investing a lot of money into. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that the building is going to be demolished. If they sell their business, I'm hoping um, that they'll continue to use the space. Um, but if they don't sell the business, I would like a permit to demolish it and I will apply to the ZBA to put something aesthetically very pleasing uh, in its place. So as far as the building goes, I don't know what it was originally. Um, my guess is that it was moved there or possibly maybe it was a barn at one point. I don't really know. It's old, it's post and beam. The rooms are really small. They're all at different levels. The second floor is basically unfinished. 
Um, there's, there's, there's nothing architecturally important about it. Um, so I guess that's really all I can tell you at this point. Okay, thank you. Um, commissioners, do you have uh, questions? Do we know anything about um, what's under the siding or wh when those windows are put in or anything? It doesn't look like at all like a historic building at this point. Yeah, no, I don't know when that was, when that work was done. No, I'm sorry. And I don't know what's underneath. I didn't peel it away. Given, given your description of it, is it safe to be used by a business? Yeah, it's safe to be used. Okay. My point was, you know, my preference when I look at an old building like this is to try to salvage, you know, the structure, the, you know, the bones of the building, but they're so far gone. I mean, there's extra supports, the floors are sagging. There's no headroom on the second floor. The, it's, an, it's the rubble, field stone foundation. It's just throwing good money after bad. And that's why I'm here today. Thank you. In your um, application, you say plan is to demolish existing structure and replace with colonial reproduction. And then I can't tell what you're saying. With L four bedroom house? What's that mean? Yes. my my intent would be to have an L coming out, out the back. Of the, the front structure? No, an L coming out the back of the building that we're talking about. So it'd be shaped like a T. So, but that building wouldn't be there. You'd be building a new structure. Yeah, the building that I would propose, I mean, I would have to go to the ZBA for a special permit, but the building that I would propose would, would be the exact same footprint of what's there now with oh. a, with a um, an L coming out the back. I see, okay. This is probably really clear to some people, but not to me. So the two pictures marked east and north, am I looking at proposed construction here? Or am no, I looking- that's the building as it stands right now. Okay. If you look at it on Google Maps, you can see it really clearly. Yeah, I was just about to pull that up, just so. Yeah. Um, do you want me to share my screen, or I don't know. If I, I'll do that in a second. Okay. Yeah, I, I've I've been in it um, a few years ago. They they uh, they needed a variance from the architectural access board because of the uneven floors and the steps inside, and so they're looking to get. Um, you know, a waiver from requirements there. And it was, I mean, it's not, it's not, it, it is, it does feel like an older building, but it is not in good shape. I've been in there with my chickens and I have to say, it doesn't feel at all historical inside. It just feels old. R right, it, right, it feels old, right. So there's, here's the building now. Um, if you can see the screen, it's set back behind, here's the, Front, the front building on the lot, and here is the the building we're discussing. No, Nate, you're we're still looking at the same thing. You haven't put up the Google. Oh, yeah. so yeah, so. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's so funny. I was just in a meeting, and someone forgot to do that, and I laughed. <laughs> there it is. No, and then <laughs> I do the same thing. It's so hard. I can. Yeah, so here's the here's the building. Here's the the front building, and here's the building in question. Got it. Great. Thank you. And so, yeah, the, you know, this is the south side. Here's the east, or, yeah, east. Yes. Yep. So the first two photos in the application, those were the main building. Is that right? Let me just go back. So the first two photos are, sorry, this is, these two right here? Mm -hmm. No, that's the ends. That would be, I'm saying the north side. So if we, yeah, it'd be, you know, this gable end right here. Yeah. 
Okay, thanks. All right, uh, are there any other questions from commissioners? No, thank you. Okay, so um, can I, is there a motion to close the public hearing? And then we'll go into our deliberation. I so move. Okay. I second. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're, uh, we'll, we'll go through our criteria again. Was there a vote to close though? Was that all set? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, all in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. 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 Any, Any abstentions? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We'll close the public hearing. Okay, and uh, go to our criteria for. Um, Significance. Sorry, I'm fiddling with my. Well, is it, is it, can you, I was trying to share the criteria again. Can everyone see that? There. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll just begin with um, is it listed on or is it within an area listed on the National Register of Historic Places? Or is it the subject of a pending application? It is not. Okay. Um, so now we'll move to uh, historical importance. And by the end of this meeting, I think we'll know all of these by heart. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as character, interest, or value as part of the development, heritage, or cultural characteristics of the town, commonwealth, or nation. And let's see, we'll start it here. Yeah. Oh, Pat may have, oh, Pat has gone. Uh, oh. <laughs> right. get away. Well, what are, sorry, sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. I'm going to, I'll come back to you in a moment, Pat. We're on okay. the first criterion. Uh, of character, interest, or value as part of the development, heritage, or cultural characteristics of the town. Um, so, Robin? No. Dan? No. Jane? No. Teddy? No. Uh, no for me. And Pat? No. Uh, is it the site? Of, do we know if it's the site of an historic event? Pat? No. Robin? No. Jan? No. Jane? No. Patty? No. And no for me. Um, is it identified with a person or group of persons who had some influence on, uh, on society? Or, oh, that's all. <laughs> 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 I had to scoot my window. <laughs> I know this last time, so I know how hard it is. <laughs> uh, all right, Jan. No. <laughs> Jane. Nope. Penny. No. No for me and Pat. No. And Robin. No. All right. Exemplifies uh, cultural, political, economic, social, or historic heritage of the community. Jane. No. Patty. No. No for me, Pat. No. Robin. No. Jan. Not its current condition. No. Okay. All right. Um, architectural importance. Um, does it portray the environment of a group of people in an era of history characterized by a distinctive architectural style? Patty? Uh, no. No for me. Pat? No. Robin? No. Dan? Not anymore. For me? No. Um, does it embody those distinguishing characteristics of an architectural type? And I'll start with no. And Pat? No. Robin? No. Jan. Not anymore. 
Harry? No. All right. Uh, is it the work of an architect, master builder, or craftsman whose individual work has influenced the development of the town? And Pat? No. Robin? No. Dan? No. Jane? No. No. Again. Contains elements of architectural design, detail, materials, or craftsmanship, which represents a significant innovation. Um, Pat? No. Robin? No. Dan? No. Um, Teddy? No. And no for me. And um, other Jane also says no. Oh, I'm sorry, Jane. <laughs> you, you, you keep picking either Jane or Hetty. So Hetty didn't vote last time. <laughs> Say yeah. no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I'm looking at. <laughs> I'm actually reading names, so it it should be very hard to miss someone. So I, I'm sorry about that. Uh, all right. Moving on to geographic importance. Um, is uh, is the site part of or related to a square, park, or other distinctive area? And you're at Robin. Oh, uh, I would say yes. Dan? No. Jane? No. Penny? Yes. Uh, this Jane says no. Uh, Pat? No. Four nose and three yes. Can I ask a question? Sure. Sure. Why, why is its relationship to Kendrick Square Park not? I'm just curious why that's. Is it because it's out of sight, or I mean that was my basis for answering yes. It doesn't really make that park or that. It just says is related to, yeah. <laughs> is part of or related to a distinctive area. I mean, I would agree I guess, it doesn't make it, but. I, the reason I voted no on that, Robin, is because I think it's part of the historic, isn't also part of the historic district? Because that's what I was thinking is that it, it's part of that, like, historic district. And right, so, so that would be the next. Um, yeah, so that's why I said no to that one, because I was going to say yes to the next one. I don't know if that makes any sense. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. I, you know, that's a good question, Robin. I think the, um, it's my thought would be, for instance, um, you know, buildings on the, on a town common often face the common and are aligned in a way that it contributes to the space. And I think this building being set back from Kendrick Park, you know, Kendrick Park was, it's only a park now because we've, ta we've taken all the houses off, but it wasn't as if this was, it was a planned park and these built, you know, this building in particular was, the structure was made to reinforce that, the, the park. Right. But okay. I mean, I, I mean, I agree with all that. I guess it's maybe the, um, maybe the definition needs, needs work. Yeah, no, it's interesting. I mean, is it related to, it's just, you know, it's right. a, yeah. And it looks to me like what the owner said makes sense that it was moved there or it was a barn or something. It doesn't look like it was designed to be part of the streetscape. Yep. Okay. All right, so the final uh, criterion is, um, is the structure as to its unique location or physical characteristics. Does it represent an established and familiar visual feature of the neighborhood, village center or community as a whole? And we'll start with Jan. I'd say no. Jane? Uh, I'm going to go with no, now that I'm looking at it again. Uh, Hetty? No. This Jane says no. Pat? No. Robin? No. Okay. Um, all right, so we have found that. Not significant, yeah. right? I'm going yeah. through. Right, nothing. Okay. Okay. 
So um, that means the demolition permit can go forward. Without further ado. Thank you. Yep, thank Actually, you. No vote on that because it's found not to be significant, so demolition can proceed. Right. Right. All right. Okay. Well, Joel, thank you for meeting with us. Thank you, Nate. Thanks, I'll, Joel. Uh, I'll, I'll make you an attendee again if you want to sit through the rest of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my first Zoom. <laughs> oh, first right. one? How yeah. did that happen? Where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> I've been working, believe it or not. <laughs> I'm, hide I'm hiding. <laughs> <laughs> We've noticed that the last couple yeah. of days. Oh, yeah. fake this one. <laughs> it's, it's because that my the, what I'm sharing on the screen is more important than than my look. I'm told I, I'm told it looks like I've I'm like been on Survivor. <laughs> like I, I, haven't, I haven't had a haircut in a few months and just not looking. looking big, you know. Well, none of us have had haircuts in a few months. We all yeah. have to see each other. It's not fair. I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, I have it in, in gallery view or whatever, so I can see your screen and I can see the little black box that oh, I don't oh, get okay. to see you, so. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Your salons are open. <laughs> <laughs> so we come to the public hearing, to open the public hearing for 117 Amity Street. Mm -hmm. um, I so move. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Extensions. Oh, is it? Sorry, I'm asking this question after we've gone through two of these. Um, would it be more useful just to take <laughs> a no votes on these? <laughs> doing roll call. Well, during Zoom, they, you know, I think one, last time what we've done, I think we could do is for each um, each of the three categories, have a vote. So maybe discuss the criteria, but then vote, for instance, on just architectural importance and then vote on geographic or historical as opposed to each, uh, you know, if, if, unless there's, you know, a certain criterion that's really speaks to the pro, um, structure. But I think maybe doing the three, maybe three roll call votes for each of the criteria, you know, for each section. Okay. All right, let me, um, so what are, what are, can you, can you see the, um, Alon, you've been made a panelist. Do you want me to, I can have you share your screen? Uh, sure. Actually, that's interesting. Why can't I have you share your screen? Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then is there anyone else we want, you'd want me to promote to panelists for this project or are you okay? Um, I, I think Garrison might be on. He is, yes, let me, I'll promote Garrison to panelists. All right. And I think um, uh, the contractor is on, Zinnia as well. Sure, yeah, they're promoted, all right. And I don't know if the, if our clients, the owners, are on Don Fisher and Susan Haas. I see a you know a six one seven number, but I'm not sure if it's them. But I think okay. we're. If they raise their hand, maybe you can. Sure. Let them in. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so thank you for um, having us. I'm Elon Tierney. I'm president of Keen Rental Architects. I've been working with Don and Susan on their project. Um, they have this sweet little house at 117 Amity Street and the existing um, garage, which we believe uh, might have been an addition to the original house. Um, shortly after that house was built sometime in the 1920s, um, isn't quite big enough to fit their car in. And the goal is to um, replace this garage with one that's very similar his, in terms of its historic character, but wide enough, three feet wider so they can get their car in there in the winter 
and um, have a garage door opener. And um, right now the floor level on the second floor is about nine inches lower than the second floor. And so raising that floor up would allow them to use that space above the garage and um, it would allow them to put a garage door opener in it. In it. Um, the upper, uh, can you see my cursor when I'm circling around? Yes. Okay. So uh, here's Amity Street and 117 Amity Street is tucked in behind the, um, the main houses on Amity Street. But when you're walking down, you can peek back and in particular, you see this front facade of, of the house. I think probably the easiest thing for me to do is to walk through the drawings to explain it, um, the, what we're proposing. And uh, so I'll just quickly go through it. This is the site plan, the driveway from Amity Street comes here, and this is the garage. Um, <clears throat> it currently, the house as it exists is over the, the setback, and so we're proposing to extend it three feet. That's what that little red box is, is it'll continue that um, non-conformance. This is the existing garage right here. This is the three feet that we're proposing to add to it. This is the main entrance to the house. Um, and there is an, uh, a connection from the garage onto the house or into the house. This is the second floor. This is currently the master bedroom. These two closets, which are above the garage, um, are at the same level. This unfinished storage space is the nine inches uh, lower that um, they're using for storage right now as an attic space. These are some elevations of the existing garage. So the front elevation, we'd be taking away the entire garage. This is what it looks like on the side, um, the east elevation, the north elevation, which faces, there's a large fence along this backside. So nobody can actually see that rear elevation. Um, this is just uh, showing the current section through the garage. So this is the garage space. This is the um, attic space. You can see that there's a little transom window which is in the uh, current attic space right now. And this is a, the site plan just showing the extension of the garage over here. This is showing um, the larger garage, still maintaining a connection to the house. We are proposing a pedestrian door on the side as well as a window um, here and a larger garage door. The second floor, as I said, we would raise this level so that this whole second floor is at the same level and we're calling this a bonus room. It's, it's, a, it's more like a very small study space potentially. And then these are the elevations of what that would look like. Uh, the front elevation, currently the porch has some trim that wraps around it, so we would continue that trim uh, around the garage. Um, we'd be replacing or providing garage doors that are very similar to the garage doors that are currently there. It's half glazed with paneling below. We are adding or proposing to add dormers um, to the front and the back of the garage to allow for more headroom and usability of that space. And then the east elevation, as I said, there's a pedestrian door. We're adding another window for light and, um, and another window up in the gable. Most of the windows on the house are, um, are casement windows. So we're uh, replicating that on this addition. Uh, these uh, dormers will have awning windows similar to the existing dormers. And then this is just a section showing how the height of the garage is increased and which allows for the garage door opener um, and the uh, new bonus space above the garage. This is a um, enlarged elevation of what the garage door will look like. These are some details on the 
windows. They uh, currently have some Pella windows, historic uh, windows that have been installed and we'd be using the same windows that were actually put in last year. And this is a rendered view of what that new garage would look like. And this is the proposed uh, light fixture on either side of the garage doors. And just here's some additional photographs of the existing garage. Some photographs of the interior of the garage. Um, in talking with the contractor about whether we could maintain the structure, it's, uh, it's not in great shape and it's the framing is undersized and the doors are in very poor condition. And this is just what the um, space above the garage looks like, the storage area. So that is, uh, that is it. Um, we did submit uh, with our application our historic review. I don't know if you want me to go through that or if you feel familiar with all of that information and just want to ask questions. Yeah, we got the historic review just a little bit before uh, the meeting. So, uh, commissioners, do you, do you have a chance to look at it or do you want to you take a, a moment to look through it? I'd like to take a moment, thank you. Okay. Elon, I just want to be clear, You're, you would demolish the entire garage and then rebuild. Is that correct? So, um, Let's just go back up a few drawings here. Yeah, so if you're looking at the front, we would be taking down the, the this whole garage piece on the side here, but the main body of the house would remain as is. And it would essentially, the same form is just getting three feet wider, and we are adding dormers to the upstairs just to provide a, a little bit more head height and usability trying to maintain the same dormer character that already exists. Mm -hmm. Elon, could, could you, um, so on that view we just had of the existing garage, um, these, um, those are the little transom windows above the, the main garage door. Yeah, let me zoom in a little bit. Oops. So this is transom here, which is currently the floor level is um, down here. Mm -hmm. So those windows are above the garage. They don't actually, you can't see them from the garage level. And uh, there wasn't really a way to replicate that when we once we raise the floor level. Um, you can see this line right here represents where the second floor is. Mm -hmm. And so trying to maintain that horizontal element, we added um, uh, the trim, the horizontal band trim um, to tie it together. You can see it here and here. And the reason you have an off-center dormer with only two windows is because of the way the space is being used for a closet? Correct. Yep, there's a closet in this area right here, which is existing. Well, actually, it's existing and we're going to rebuild it. It's, it is the closets for the master bedroom. Right. But the whole house has some asymmetry going on and we felt that it still feels balanced when you look at the, the house as a whole. And you have two windows on a dormer on the far left as well, so. Correct. Okay, um, so did, um, did you all have an opportunity to look through the historic narrative of the property or do you need more, a few more minutes for that? Could we put that up just for a few minutes, please? The historic narrative? Yeah. Sure. 
Um, do you want me to briefly walk through it? No, I, I for me, I can skim it. Um, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Are there um, other questions for the applicant? Is, is, has this house been lived in by the same client as the current, current, current client? I believe that they've been there for decades. I'm not sure exactly how long, but um, I know that we talk about some of the work that has been done on the house. Yeah. And um, my firm, I did not pursue but John um, worked on the renovations to the, um, the bedroom and bathroom, which I think was done, where did we say that was done in the late 90s? Mm -hmm. Oh no, uh, bathroom bedroom remodeling was done in 2013. Um, so I'm not sure if they've been there since the 90s. Is the guess. Sorry, uh, Don and Susan have lived there for about 30 years. Okay, thanks. Will the um, existing garage doors get salvaged in any way? They did not. They're in pretty bad shape. Um, Uh, you don't have a close up of it. I don't know how, how well this is going to. The existing garage doors are rotted pretty much completely. Um, they're, then they're all warped and they're in very bad shape. Um, and part of the issue is that they're currently swinging true carriage doors that swing open, mm -hmm. which in New England is difficult to work with um, in the winter. And uh, they would really like to be able to have a door that opens and doesn't have to go uh, against snow and ice. To open. Oh, I'm sorry. You, I, mustn't, I, I wasn't clear. I meant salvaged in terms of, you know, offered up for salvage. I mean, would they be, you know, would they show up in a historic salvage place? I mean, they just, you know, from here, they look really interesting. And I was curious if they would have a second life somewhere else. I, I'd let Zinnia talk about that if she thought somebody might be able to reuse them. I'm, I'm not sure. They're in pretty bad shape. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the, the doors are in extremely bad condition. Like, they're, they won't close. They're not <clears throat> anywhere near even and... You know, we might be able to salvage some of the glass mm -hmm. if you're able to get it out, but okay. there's what no way to do it. What about window? Would it be something that might go into an architectural salvage place? What was the question? The transom window? The transom window. Uh, the transom window might be able to be saved, but the doors themselves are beyond, they're beyond, they're going to fall apart taking them off the hinges. Mm -hmm. uh, the rot, um, I don't know if you can see it. Um, when we were there a couple of months ago, replacing a couple of windows, they asked us to just put a coat of green paint, any old green paint, just to make them look prettier from the street. So you can't see the rot, but the rot goes up almost to the level of the glass. Okay, thank you. Okay, hey, um, Nate, do you have anything to add? No, I think, you know, the you know, like the inventory form was completed for the local historic district. So this is also going to local historic district for review. And, you know, the house is, um, you know, late twenties and there's, you know, it's, it's hard to say if the house was, was a barn that was renovated into a house or replaced a barn on the site, but, you know, it's been modified over the years, uh, to be this kind of bungalow style cottage. So I don't, you know, I don't have anything to add, um, you know, the, just the garage pieces, maybe, you know, not, maybe not original, but shortly after, you know, it was built, you know, it was added. So it's been there a while. Okay. And uh, so could, could you uh, further clarify the, um, the district status? It's part of a local historic district. And, and it's part of the National Register District as well. Uh, Prospect Gaylord 
Yes. National Register District. Okay. Thank you. All and right. I'm gonna let's see. If, are we? I'll say. Should I show the criteria again? Yes. Yeah, I think so. If, if is there a motion to close the public hearing? I so move. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Okay. So uh, we'll return to our criteria. I think you should have to do it without any notes, Jane. Okay. <laughs> 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 Let's see about that. I get a I get a pass on this one because the first one is whether it's part of a national register district. <laughs> so we're automatically at yes. Um, uh, uh, so that I mean, in a way that that makes it's automatically a significant structure uh, because it meets that criterion. So we don't need to do anything else. We don't need to. Does anybody um, want to uh, discuss any of the other uh, historical, architectural, geographic importance? I'll pass. Sounds good yeah. to me. Uh, I'll pass. Yeah, I pass as well. Okay. Would you, yeah, it doesn't seem necessary. Would you like to hear me recite from memory what those? <laughs> Okay. We'll study up and do it next meeting. All right. Um, all right. So, um, is there, uh, shall we have a motion for the disposition of the demolition application? And then that can be seconded, and then we can discuss in the vote. Okay. I'll move that we allow demolition without delay um, on this structure, and then we can discuss. A second. Um, any, any discussion? No. My feeling is that it's a um, sensitive reproduction of the same building, the same portion of the building, but made in a way that allows continued use of the structure. And I think that's an important thing for us to consider sometimes that um, if we're too narrow in um, what we allow um, buildings are no longer viable and therefore they won't be kept or they'll be allowed to deteriorate too far and then have to be demolished. So I see this as a kind of maintenance issue to keep it occupied and functioning within the, the town. So that's why I think it would be um, okay to allow it. I agree with Janet on that. Yeah, I, I agree with the reasoning. I, I think that it's it's an improvement to preserving the ori the original structure. So I I, um, I appreciate all of that. I think for the benefit of uh, those who may be um, attending this meeting remotely, um, I should have mentioned that um, in our in our determination of um, whether the demolition delay should be imposed or not, um, we are not, we do not take into consideration what will, what will come in its place. Um, it, our, that's, that's not within our charge. So, um, so we're really um, basing our, our vote and determination on the, the significance of the structure itself and whether we think that the demolition or the alteration itself can be uh, can go forward. It's just a point of That's the letter of the law, but we never actually really stick to it because we do <laughs> let the entire proposal get presented. I mean, if that were the case, then we wouldn't. And I think it does influence us, even if we want to say it doesn't. So I agree with you. It's not supposed to. It's not within our purview. But mm, I just have to say in this case, it, it's influencing me. But the demolition, in, in, in my opinion, the demolition of the garage wouldn't be um, deleterious to the main structure. 
whether we know what they're going to do with it or not. Um, it's a sensitive reconstruction for sure. But if you were to take a garage that's not useful and just remove it from the house and not destroy the architectural benefits and the history of the house itself, um, it is another way to look at it from you know, perspective. Okay, so uh, all in favor of the motion to allow could we have a roll call vote though, Jane? Sorry about that. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so, Pat? In favor, yes. Okay. Robin? Uh, uh, in favor, yes. Dan? Yes. Jane? Yes. Teddy? In favor, yes. And uh, I vote in favor. All right. Well, thanks everyone for presenting the project thank you thank you very much thank you Bye -bye. thank you i think there's still some attendees here and let me see if i can pull up the uh agenda so the sorry there was a confusing posting error or mix up so after the hearings there's still there's i know there's uh, perhaps someone here to discuss the civil war tablets i th I, th I think i emailed you a letter from anika yes. and then there's you know 132 northampton road laura baker is attending in the discussion of um demolition delay bylaw west Cemetery signs and others so you know i'm not sure if um, we, we want to talk about the Civil War tablets quickly. If there's anyone is in the audience, if you want to raise your hand, you can. If not, I can just speak to it quickly. I've I'd seen someone, but I don't see anyone raising hands now. Do you want to? Do you want to go? Yeah, I think you know. I, um, I, you know, I met with Anika, um, um, I guess this week, and we've been emailing a little bit. And she, you know, in her letter, she indicated she has a team that she's working with. She, you know, has a um, different citizens and volunteers that are helping. And she, you know, she, she's trying to come up with a proposal to, excuse me, get to have an outdoor display, and you know, and kind of na um, you know, identify certain places in town. For instance, like the North, you know, the Town Common, outside Town Hall, Kendrick Park, you know, or possibly West Cemetery. What, one thing we're going to be doing, and um, we spoke, I spoke with Dave Zomack, the assistant town manager, in the next few weeks, we might try to have a site visit to Roxton to see the tablets. And may, we, before COVID hit, we had reached out to the conservators and asked them to attend as well, just to have the, just to see the tablets again, just to understand their condition. And Anika will, you know, be presenting over the summer. So, you know, I think she sees it as a collaborative effort. Uh, she went to the Human Rights Human Resources Commission. There'll probably be other boards and committees in town that'll be involved. And so, you know, I think some of it is just making, you know, just wanting to see how the commission views the project. And if, you know, it may be that this becomes a CPA, a project that requests CPA funds or other funding. So it's just. I think it was just, you know, to get a pulse on the commission and to let you know that, you know, she's continuing to move it forward. So I know she's, I think she's pretty dedicated to it. Yeah, I, I think it's really intriguing and uh, I'd love to see them. Mm -hmm. um, from what I've read so far, they sound to be very heavy and quite, <laughs> and quite fragile. So that, that's really an intriguing mixture in terms of display and preservation and um i just, and also this the whole history of her and this group and who's represented in the tablets themselves i just think it's very very interesting we should we should pursue it in whatever way is appropriate yeah i mean i think you know for the commission i think as it moves forward you know we've been talking about an outdoor display so, you know, there's questions about how to safely do that and keep the tablets preserved. You know, at one point there was a discussion about having them be preserved in 
um, the Jones Library expansion. I'm not sure that's a possibility anymore, but I think, you know, the commission could also have ideas about where, where is an appropriate place? You know, is it, um, you know, does this, for instance, is this a um, part of a new war memorial in general for the town or is it, you know, a Civil War tablet display? You know, how are they displayed in sequence or not? So, you know, my, my opinion is that they're meant to be seen together. At some point, some people have asked that they could be separated. And I think that, I think that would be difficult to then have different air, viewing areas for them. And I agree, they are large, you know, they weigh a few hundred pounds each and the bigger ones are about five feet by six and a half feet. And they, uh, you know, if you carry them like a tabletop, they crack in half. So you'd have to support them uh, some way. So yeah, I, I, some communities, I know West Springfield, uh, you know, and a few others I've been into, I've you know, they have smaller tablets and they're still up in municipal buildings, but in Amherst, we have six tablets or five tablets and one's a scroll, it's smaller. So, but there's six in total and they're, it's, they take up a lot of space. I mean, they're big. So it's not a simple solution as to just putting them in on a wall in town hall. They really do need almost own display area. Well, I just, I mean, it's also really interesting that with all of the kind of current controversy about monuments and what, what is an appropriate monument to anybody or everyone, or I just, I just feel like how, how timely and um, culturally relevant it would be to, to find a solution that would be potentially unifying. I'm trying to put, <laughs> cast my words very carefully here because, of course, it's a it's a memorial to war, but it's also a um, memorial to the people who died, and um, it's also about Amherst. and And I think that you know, it's it means that we should. Uh, I'd really like to see them. Mm -hmm. Nate, are all the names on them, do you know, are the, the people that um, Bob Romer was working on in the cemetery, the Black Regiment, are they on there? They are. So the 54th is listed, mm -hmm. and as well as, you know, it's any, any member, any resident who, who served. So Good. Yeah, it's okay. quite, a, quite a few names. I, I, it, it is interesting, Hetty. It's a great way to put it. I think it's, it's a war memorial, but I, I see it as a, you know, historical um memorial for the town i mean it's it's almost like you know to me it's almost like the mural is in a way that if you read the names on the tablets there's so many names that are part of the history of amherst not just uh you know that they were part of the so the wars just you know they're all the names that you, you you'd see that are part of the history of the town so it's a it's a, a dual purpose here and it's soldiers and sailors isn't it i seem to remember yeah, I think it's, yeah, I think it's every, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So, Nate, could you convey our support for the project and our, our thanks for um, coming sure. to the Historical Commission and keeping us informed and, um, and you know, we're, eager to, we're eagerly looking forward to the proposal. Okay, yeah. Okay. Great. Now, you know, and if we schedule a site visit, I'll reach out to the commission. So if we want to have a time, we can do that. If people are comfortable, we can, um, you know, they're at Ruxton and North Amherst. And if, if you, you know, I'll, someone can take pictures, but the idea would be we can, you know, I'll reach out to you too to find a time with Anika and she may have one or, one or two other people who want to come and we can try to get um, people to see the tablets. Thank you, Nate. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, all right. Um, review and discussion of 132 Northampton Road comprehensive permit. Um, Laura Baker's here from Valley CDC, or she was attending, or she still is. The um, Laura, raise your hand if you would like to speak. If not, I can speak. The um, all right. The 
you know, so Valley CDC owns one thirty two North Hampton Road. They Laura came to a commission meeting in November, or December to discuss this potential project, and now it is a, a, a real project. So Valley CDC has submitted a comprehensive permit for this property to build 28 units of affordable uh, housing. So, you know, studio apartments and their plan involves uh, demolishing the existing building on the property and building a new building. And so as a comprehensive permit, all local permitting is uh, funneled through the Zoning Board of Appeals. So the Historical Commission wouldn't review this uh, necessarily at a demolition hearing, but would provide recommendations or, or you know, a, you know, an opinion to the Zoning Board on the demolition of the building. And so that's why it's on the agenda. So the Commission can, you know, could discuss it today. If you'd want to discuss it at your future meeting, you could, but that's, you know, the role of the ZBA with a comprehensive permit is to look at all permitting. So it's looking at demolition permitting, it's look, you know, looking at like utility permitting, uh, land use and everything. So, you know, this won't come before the commission as a formal demolition hearing. Is there a particular timeline, uh, like a date by which uh, the historical commission input would be needed? The commission, uh, the ZBA starts the hearing tomorrow night and it's continued until July. I imagine the hearings will continue through July and into August. So, you know, if we want to have a future discussion at the July meeting, this could be a, you know, one of the first agenda topics to be discussed. I think that might be a good idea so we can kind of refresh ourselves on the, on the, on the site and maybe go back to, I seem to recall there was a presentation or information, a printed information that we had in, I think it was November. Yeah, and we made a preliminary kind of support of the project, but I remember, uh, I'd have to see it again because I remember part of the house being kept and only portions of it demolished and rebuilt. So well, I think we'd have to look back at that. Sure, and they, you know, let's say they've submitted a product notification form. Alora's raised her hand, I'll promote her to panelists. Laura, you're being promoted to panelists. They, Valley submitted a product notification form to Mass Historic, or maybe the town did actually, <clears throat> on, um, because it's getting block grant funding. And Mass Historic found that, you know, the demolition of the house would have no adverse impact on a, on a, on a, on a significant structure. So they didn't find that the demolition of the house would be detrimental. So, hi, it's Laura. Um, I did come before the board in an informal way. At that time, uh, the path of permitting we thought would include a demolition delay process, um, but we were subsequently advised by the planning staff that we should just roll it all into the comprehensive permit application. Um, when I met with you before, uh, the town had submitted a request for determination to Mass Historic and we were waiting on the response. And so at that time, the commission said they were interested in seeing what Mass Historic had to say. Um, it's not an individually significant structure. It's not in a district. And Mass Historic came back with that finding of no adverse impact. Um, there was an earlier uh, version of plans at this location that did include reusing the house and putting a large addition on it. Um, but by the time I went to meet with you folks, we had decided it would be preferable from a programmatic standpoint and a site design standpoint point to demolish the house and build a new structure. So that is the plan that's before the Zoning Board of Appeals. And it's on the town's website as well, um, that set of plans. Thank you, Laura. Um, do you, uh, well, with the Mass Historic's determination, would there be any reason for us to need to discuss this at a future meeting? Well, we're not being asked to determine whether or not we're de permitting demolition. So it's really whether we still support the project like we did in November, right? I mean, it, it, yeah, I think, I think it's a little of both. I think the, um, the ZBA may ask, you know, has what boards and committees at the town have reviewed this? So, you know, whether it's the historical commission or 
uh, mm -hmm. the housing trust or the planning board, and then they'll say, you know, what what was the opinion of those boards? And so, you know, if the historical commission, you know, they might look at it from both, you know, does the commission support the product in general, which means, you know, say affordable housing, or does the commission support the demolition of the house? And so, you know, I guess you can um, address both of those or or you know something in general. But I think the ZBA would be would be looking for something from the commission, from the historical commission. Um, you know, there are neighbors who would say that this is a historically significant building. And so if the commission concurred with that, I think the ZBA would be interested in knowing that. If the commission did not concur with that, then I think they'd be interested in knowing that. Um, there is a neighbor who um, reiterates that this is a historic district, for example, that, that this house is in a historic district. So, you know, some of it's just clarifying what is, what is the nature of this property and its location from a historic perspective. That's very honest of you, Laura. You could just say, oh, no, everybody agrees and have us go right along with it. That's very <laughs> nice of you to be so open. Well, it's better to address it in, in a definitive way. I, I hear what you're saying, Laura. And so I think the commission needs to decide what that means for us. Mm -hmm. Well, how about if we um, review the materials that are online and meet again in July to make a determination? I think that's the best thing to do and not try to do it tonight. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I think we need to give it, give it more consideration. And I'm not sure whether it has to go through your typical protocol or if it's more of a kind of tone and sense of the commission about is this an important historic building or is it not an important historic building? Um, I'll leave that to your to your no, best judgment. We have to go through the criteria because those are specific to a hearing for demolition, but we should probably right. make a memo um, stating how we feel. Yeah, I think that would be really helpful. So it'll be on the agenda in July then for for the commission. Yes, it'll be on the agenda for our next meeting. Sure, I can resend some information. So you know, it was you know originally part of the the neighboring property and then it was you know it was a barn that was then in the maybe the late 1940s converted to a single family to a residence and it's been used as one such so now it's a separate property um but i, I can send that out and um I, I think mo i think i think most of that is online but i can i can make sure that you get it or just give us send us the link so we don't have to go looking for it that would be nice. right right it's kind of TMI online. <laughs> so, and what may not be online are photos of the existing structure. So, you know, I think you could share idea. those maybe, Nate, with the commission, or I could. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I may, well, I may ask you if, um, if I don't have some good pictures. I think I do in a previous report. I'll have to just, you know, find yeah. it. Yeah. Let me know if you, what you need. Okay. All right, thank you, Laura. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Okay. okay, updating the demolition delay bylaw. Uh, okay, so um, the first thing I wanted to speak to is I followed up with Chris Skelly at the Mass Historical Commission because we wanted to get a workshop, a demo delay workshop going to help guide our revision. Um, and uh, he is up for a remote um, workshop. What, over the course of our conversation, uh, we decided that since he hasn't yet done a remote workshop, um, he would just do it as a presentation to the Historical Commission um, and not by invite other communities, so as to not confuse things too much. Um, <clears throat> but because our demo, demolition delay is under review. That means it has to be a public meeting. So it's to be a workshop that's a public meeting. It's open to the public, but he won't be sending out invites to any other communities. It would just be for us. Um, he said it's about a 90 minute presentation with the opportunity for us to ask questions uh, as we go along, um, particular to our 
circumstances and I told him I would get back to him because he doesn't have to do any invitations. It doesn't, he doesn't have to be a lot of lead time that I would get back to him with dates uh, and times that uh, we were available. So I don't know if I should maybe send out a doodle poll around that or if people have suggestions or how we want to manage um, so, time. Robin, it's Jane. I, I wonder if it would be helpful. I think we can have a draft of our completed revisions out to people like within the next week or so. And I don't know if that would be helpful to have before we go do his workshop or I think not. that's fine. Yeah, so I, I think mean, also the um, Rob Moore, the building commissioner, I think the other year working with staff developed another um, uh, demolition delay bylaw. So I, I think it was presented over a year ago, but then it wasn't, uh, you know, I don't think it was progressed at all, but I, I was, I was going to um, send Rob's version out to the commission as well, just so you could see what, you know, what he had done. And I think, yeah, so my thought would be with, with Chris Skelly, it's interesting, Rob, when I saw your email, I was thinking that he would want me to manage the Zoom in that, you know, we could invite other communities if we wanted because it's a public meeting, but Chris wouldn't be inviting them. But it sounds like it really is just Chris would be giving a 90 minute presentation on, dem on, on the demolition bylaw. So, you know, I, I my thought would be it doesn't have to supplant a normal meeting of the commission. That's it's it's a fairly long presentation, and if there's questions, that's an easy that's a two hour right their discussion on just the bylaw. So if that's if the commission, I think I think you know so maybe in July then we'd have a normal meeting, and then also this meeting with Chris Kelly, and we'd have to, maybe it could be during the day, or I I, I don't know if Chris does, if he would be open to meeting uh, meeting in the evening or not, or I think he's he's done both. Yeah, I think it should be in addition to a regular meeting. Oh, focus on the Robin, are you going to um, flesh out some dates with him? Um, that well, he, uh, I was going to bring dates to him. So the, to the question, him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I agree it shouldn't be our regular meeting because it's just too. Right. It, it should have its own focus. Um, I guess I just want to say that Tuesdays are never a good day for me. Um, aside from that, you know, that they're all over the lot, depending upon what group I'm part of is meeting. So we just, Robin, maybe send out a doodle poll then. Do you think that would be the best and yes. have like three or four time slots just to see? Um, yeah. So, so within a couple of, I'm just thinking of my calendar here. Um, I think if Thursdays have been good for us for meeting days, uh, maybe we could look at Thursdays for this special session. Uh, how do people feel about the week? The week of the 6th is uh, just what, a week and a half away, and the week of the 13th. How soon do we need to meet on 132 Northampton Road in order to? get in under their deadline? Well, I think for um, the ZBA will meet, um, I think into August with this, okay. with the project. So, I mean, I, I'd like to have it by the end of July. You know, so well, let's not have this seminar and our meeting in the same week is kind of where right. I'm coming from here. So when when is our next meeting then? We're kind of off schedule a little bit, I think. If it, we are, so I guess that's a, um, Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's one that one the commission would like to meet next. Yeah, I don't think we have one scheduled. No. We went to... We've been meeting on Wednesdays, and was it the third Wednesday? I'm tr I can't remember anymore because it's. I think it is the third Wednesday, uh, or has been, which would be. Right. July. We had to adjust last month when we scheduled it. I forget what the problem was, but. We could go back to the third Wednesday, but then let's have the seminar either the week before or the week after. Yeah. The third Wednesday would be July 15th. Would we want to meet 
then um, and then maybe the, the following week or two would be a meeting with Chris Skelly. So the last two weeks in July. The week of the 22nd, I'm gone. And actually July 15th is already booked for me um, just because of all this out of sequence business. Wow. So would the 22nd be preferable for the meeting then? I think it would be. That's for our be historical commission meeting, yeah, yeah. and we'll be doing it on Zoom. I may not be home, but I can join Zoom from anywhere, so that that works. Okay, on the 22nd. Right. That works and, for me too. And then I could do a, a doodle poll for the week of the 13th to kind of see. Or the 6th. Or the 6th. Okay. Yeah. And if you, um, if you could include Thursdays as well as Wednesdays, uh, I, I can't. I can't take too many Wednesdays out of my month. Okay, so, well, I'm sorry, Jane, what was that? Oh, if, if you wouldn't mind including a Thursday in there to see if that's a possibility. Cause oh, I was going to do all the days. I just want to, yeah, see what, I'll do like one. Is there a general consensus around meeting? I mean, I was going to do an evening, like five. I can't make Thursday nights from... From, um, but I'm just I'm just thinking of in general like yeah. a good time in the evening is five. Do people have a good time in the day, or is that a struggle for anyone? Like would like a one o'clock. I so I would do you know a Monday on one and a Monday at six for the doodle poll to kind of or five to see see how things go. Yeah, time is okay. If it's yeah, I'm flexible. I just okay. Go ahead. That's all. Okay. So I'll send that out uh, tonight. Thank you, Robin. Sure. So there, um, there is another uh, little bit uh, to talk about concerning uh, demolition delay bylaw, and that is that um, one of our uh, town councilors has concerns about um, the, the bylaw and how it is being um, applied by the historical commission. Mm. Uh, so, um, uh, Nate and I and Chris Brestrup, who's the head of the planning department, and, um, talked about this and we're uh, planning a meeting with the town manager and the town councilor who has these concerns. And, um, uh, uh, which is it, which councilor is it, or is that? It's, it's, the, right. it's Mandy Jo Haneke. Okay. And it's based upon our all of our recent um, determinations or just the way do we discuss? Uh, it is uh, apparently some general concern about uh, it, it, it's a little bit, I don't know. It's not necessarily terribly specific. Uh, mm -hmm. Concern, but it's partly has to do with um, how the bylaw is written, and um, partly about how the commission is voting, um, and about an interest in economic. So you can you can um, look at the council meeting of June 15th to, to see those comments. But she knows we're revising, right? Because we have concerns too. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Nate, maybe you, you've uh, had a- Yeah, meeting. so I think that, you know, if, if the June 15th council meeting, it's four and a half hours and it's that, you know, it's, it's like at the four hour and 40 minute mark. So you don't, you don't have to sit through all four and a half hours preceding the discussion of, it's, it's in the appointment. So it's like the last 10 minutes, but you know, I think Mandy Joe had, um, I think she attended the 205 South Pleasant Street discussion and she had read some previous minutes, I think for um, some of them. And, you know, she's an attorney. I think she finds that the bylaw, some of the criteria, the criteria in general are somewhat vague and broad and that there's not a good administrative mechanism for what what uh, needs to be reviewed through a demolition hearing so that you know there's not really a good some good thresholds and so i mean i think some of those concerns are ones the commission brings up at the same time i think 
you know, Massachusetts you know, enabling legislation for the commission and the statutes are, you know, they're, they're, not, narrow, they're not narrow in their, in their guidelines because it's so, you know, demolition is very hard to be, be so narrow and prescriptive. So, you know, I think when we have this workshop with Chris Skelly, uh, Robin, I think it'd be great to ask him what he thinks is a good example or examples of current bylaws. So, you know, Amherst was written now, um, you know, almost 20 years ago. And, you know, since um, then. Since do, then Nick, do you have the, uh, I just sent it to Jane and I can send it to you. There's a draft guide with a um, demolition delay template. Um, a PDF that I think I got in paper form, I think, when I was working with Ted. And um, that that was something that he mentioned on the phone. And he encourages okay. encourages communities to work from the template. Okay. Um, so I'll forward that to you as well. Great. Yeah, and I think, yes, yeah, yeah. so I think, you know, the counselors, for instance, you know, the one of the criteria, one of the criterion is, um, is it a common visual feature, right? And so, for instance, like, at the discussion tonight, it's like, well, if it's been, you know, if any building is, is been, is visual, is visible from the street, it's a common visual feature. And so, you know, for instance, my thought is, could that, if, if, if something like that is important, you know, could the criterion actually say, like, you know, to its, you know, is its visible location, does it support or reinforce the historic context or surroundings? So you, refine the criteria a little bit, not just is it a visual, common visual feature. So, you know, is there more to it than just, um, you know, something that could be applied to any building. So I don't, you know, I think, you know, taken out of context, I think some of the, the way the bylaws written seems like it'd be hard to apply. I think in practice, the commission applies it pretty well. So I don't, I mean, I'm not, she saw the discussion when we were talking about, is that the house that was being, they were hoping to move that's being demolished for the Humanities Center for Amherst yes. College? Yeah. Yeah, that was tough. But I actually thought that was a good discussion. I thought the commission for that, for instance, on that one on South Pleasant discussed that it's not just the high style architecture that's important. So even what would be a modest structure that represents a certain economic level or income level and then borrows from styles that, you know, that's, that type of structure is still worth saving. So, you know, I, th I think some people may think that a demolition bylaw is really meant to preserve just the, you know, the landmarks in a community. And, you know, and if you're too narrow in your, in your definitions and your scope, then for instance, you might not be able to review partial demolitions or the removal of a fence or mm -hmm. certain things. And so I think it's very difficult to write a bylaw that, is so specific and so clear that you know you could just say um, it's really easy to apply. I think some of the criteria is always going to be a little bit vague because it's hard to you know envision every possibility of applications. So I don't. I mean, that's why I think having the meeting with Chris will be good, and then um, hopefully we can meet with the counselor and staff before that as well, just to understand more of the concerns. Yeah. I'll I also is probably a um, maybe not a complete understanding of um, how the commission evaluates using the general criteria, but then how how we uh, how we apply that uh, with um, a sense of things that are not actually written in the bylaw. So, for example, there's a concern that um, the bylaw, strictly speaking, um, doesn't uh, doesn't indicate a threshold for the age of a structure being reviewed. So the counselor thought uh, that said she realized that any structure, no matter how old or young, for example, if there's a building that's just five years old, but it's a, a prominent feature on a sitting on a highway, um, you know, that that, uh, that that could be, you know, we could apply a demolition delay on that, even though in practice, what happens is we get demolition permit applications from the building commissioner who sends us applications on uh, structures that are more than 50 years old. So, you know, like the 50-year-old the trigger is not written into the bylaw, but that is the 
that's a standard rule of thumb for uh, for these bylaws all across the state. And in in practice, that's what we that's what we do. It's uh, written in our bylaw, isn't it? Because we even talked about changing it to seventy five. I I don't think it is actually in the bylaw. It's if it's not in the bylaw, then I think it's on the application for demo for demolition because I know it's written somewhere. Yeah, it may be in our procedures or it. Uh, oh, there is a we're trying to merge the procedures and the bylaw, weren't we? Yeah. 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 Right. So the right the rules and regs were updated, but really it should be you know clear in the bylaw. Uh, I was trying to look. I don't think it was either. Um, mm, okay, I'm mixing up rules and regs. Then. And I would also say, you know, I think there's another concern about concern about economic development and a, a, a sense that you know commissioners uh, may be giving undue weight to what will. Uh, come after the demolition of a of a front of a structure, um, and that is you know that's You're right. that's not in the bylaw. I mean that's not a cri a criterion for us to make a judge by which we make a judgment. Yeah. So, yeah. so just uh, Hilda has her hand raised, Jane. Okay. Uh, allow her to speak, Hilda. Um, uh, you can unmute yourself. Um, and I'm just going to say what Jane just said, because I was very upset when I heard about that meeting, because there's a, a trend in this town that design review board and historical commission need to be eliminated because they impede economic development. And my, my whole feeling, and a lot of us who have been discussing it, is that these two committees are the most important because they protect the town from the kind of development that we don't want. And so basically, I, somewhere in the bylaw, the number 1964 appears. And I think that it's with regard to um, we, the turning chicken coops or garages into housing. Mm -hmm. I think that's where that number appears. The, the building, though I don't think it's, it's been really used as it's meant to be, as we voted for it in town meeting. But I think in order to convert a garage to housing, it has to have been built before 1964. That's where that 50 year may come in rather than with the, the demolition delay. But I, I did want to say that you guys got to keep your uh, your eyes open. And I was glad to see that Hetty announced at the beginning of the meeting that she was reappointed because I think that's what the discussion was about from what I was told. I did not stay up for that meeting to hear it myself. But, but a lot of people are talking about it. And, you know, we, we've got to keep you guys. <laughs> because you're very necessary to, to maintain the interest that I remember before we got ruined by the Amherst Savings Bank. Anyway, that's, that's what I wanted to say. And, and, and it is about the economic development. I don't think we're gonna get any economic development other than student housing downtown, but that's a different issue. So you heard me. Keep your eyes and ears open. Hey, thank you, Hilda. Thank you, Hilda. Oh, I was just uh, pulled up the 50 years. It is in the, it's in the building permit application review. So in the procedure for obtaining a demolition permit, it says that the uh, building permits, uh, structures over 50 years in age shall be reviewed by the building commissioner. So it's technically in the bylaws part of the process. It is, it's not very well written in the bylaws. So I think, you know, um, and it, there's some inconsistencies in the bylaw too, and it's referenced to 40A, and then it lays out the, its own procedures. So I've always thought that with this bylaw, there's an administrative front end that needs to be updated. So the purpose, the procedures, you know, the who, how does an application get to the commission? Can staff have any administrative authority? And then there's the actual review criteria that could be refined. And so, you know, I know communities do it differently, but I think. Uh, I'll, I'll look for your email, Robin. So I do think that, you know, even if we took the bylaw as it is and tried updating it, there's a, 
so I mean, I, so I guess what I was gonna say is that I, it's almost, I, I don't know if it's better just to start new because if you start trying to, you know, just change what we have, we're gonna get stuck with some of the same, same structure of the bylaw. And I'm not sure we necessarily need, need that. So if there's another template my thought is, yeah. you know, a, an easy way to, if we wanted to amend this, would be to strike out everything. So, you know, for instance, like a the the procedure at town at with town council would be to replace section thirteen with this section thirteen, and not try to show what we have crossed out and what we've eliminated in our track changes, but really just to present a whole new version of the bylaw. To me, would be cleaner and easier. Well, I think, I mean, I think a lot of these questions, including the question of design review, because I remember going over that in class, it'll be a really productive discussion with Chris. Mm -hmm. I think that's, you know, that yeah. will, that will bring a lot of clarity. Right. Um, yeah, and he really, he, he caught, when we were talking, he cautioned against the habit of towns copying from other towns, that that's, that's not a good way to go. And that's why that they have this guide, which isn't, you know, it's not an official publication, so it's not available on the right. site. So. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, I looked the other day and I didn't see anything. You know, so right. Like, I couldn't find it either. And I was like, where did I see that? And I found it in my papers and, and, oh, and draft, yeah, I think. yeah right. it's been in draft form since I think 2006. So. And then, and then I, Hedy, think your, right, I, I think that's a really good idea because we did try it the other way and we really got bogged down and we found right. we still had errors, even when we kept checking and kept checking. So I think starting from scratch is smart. Yeah. Right. The template, obviously. And Hedy, you have your hand raised. Do you want to speak or is it just? Yes, yes. I just want to say that I need to leave the meeting and um, uh, nice to be with you all and I'll see some of you soon. <laughs> okay. See you, Hedy. Yeah. Thank you, Hedy. Bye, Hedy. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Yeah, I only have a few more minutes too. Okay. So just before we leave, July 22nd is the next meeting. Rob and you'll send on a doodle poll so we can have a workshop with Chris Skelly. And I will not be there. I will likely not be there for the July 22nd meeting. Right. Um, so, so we have West Cemetery signs and UMass Campus Pond are those items that we, uh, about which we need some action. No, I, mean, I emailed Kyle um, from Archipelago and David Fichter and David said he doesn't have much of an update on that. So he said he'd like to just, I think I'll, I'll um, Ben, I was having going to have Ben help out with that. So I think um, I can try to get Ben in touch with Kyle again, mm -hmm. just to try to get Kyle back with the commission. I'm not, I don't think anyone, unless the commission, I think is putting, going to put pressure on it or move it forward. I don't think it will move forward very fast. So no updates there. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just important. waiting for direction. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was hoping Kyle would write back, but. Mm -hmm. And then the pond. You know, I, I haven't heard anything. I you know, Hetty said in an email to me that she was interested in it, and she you know I think I shared some old photographs that were found online, and I haven't heard anything. So you know, Preserve U Mass had um, asked Mass Historic to do a kind of a, a thorough review of the information in the pond, but I I haven't received any communication yeah. about that. Um, Nate, actually, I, while I was digging through your office today on your chair, you had a a package from SWCA and it oh. said like something about the campus pond. Um, I think it came in recently, so uh, I didn't open it, but it looks like there's something, some sort of correspondence about that. Oh, feel free to open anything. That okay. You find <laughs> public in my office. Yeah, exactly. so, um, that's interesting. Yeah. So there, you know, I know that they want to, um, I know, you know, UMass would like to, I don't want to say dredge it, but then and then do some of the shoreline work. So I'm not sure what you know what that work involves, but well, maybe you can update us next meeting. Yeah, that's just, I didn't know the SWA CA had done that. All right. So have we done public comment, um, Jane? Because no, we haven't. Okay. So are they, uh, this would this is the time for public comment. We have to do that for the public. Help. Just, so, just so we're clear, the next meeting, do, do people, is the commission like four or five? Or what time do we like? I mean, it's been moving around. It's been six or seven. It's been earlier. Do we have a preferred time to meet on the 22nd? 
I, I would say late afternoon is it makes sense if everybody's available then. Um, I, I won't be there, but just in general, as we move into uh, the rest of the year, I'm back at work. So five o'clock I can do, five o'clock I can do, but before that I'm working. So five o'clock? But for the 22nd, you don't need to factor me in. Well, I'm working, so five o'clock suits me pretty well. Okay, so five, okay, it'll be 5 p.m. then. And be, remember to change it on the agenda. <laughs> That was just a holdover from the previous agenda. I know. Yeah. No, I know. I, I know. I know. I'm sorry okay. about that. Oh, we, um, I did announce that this was a period for public comment. So if there are, if there is any member of the public, this would be the time. Yeah, I see some. Is in your hand? Is it Dr. Shabazz? You're allowed to speak. You can. Un you may have to unmute yourself. to speak. I did. Can you hear me? Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So I was uh, asked to speak um, regarding the uh, communication we mailed about the Civil War tablets and our interest in um, trying to uh, get those displayed. And uh, the sense of our letter is that we thought it um, uh, necessary to uh, let uh, folks in the town know and let uh, um, the Historical Commission particularly know that uh, what we're planning to do so that if others who might have uh, might approach you all with ideas or questions that you might put us in touch so that we're all we're all working and uh, together and not at cross purposes. Absolutely. Were you able to receive the letter? Yes, we did. Yes. Very good. And uh, look at it a little bit earlier in the meeting and um, just want you to know that the Historical Commission um, is very supportive of the project and uh, admires uh, what, what you're doing to um, find a home for the Civil War tablets. And um, we'd be delighted to work with you in any way we can. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my phone, I was in the meeting from the top, but my phone had battery had died. And by the time I was able to uh, get back on this, uh, this device, which required me to update zoom and everything else. Oh, I think you all had moved down your general updates. But at any rate, um, I think that's basically the sense of it that uh, a committee of us are trying to move uh, on finding a, a way to, uh, to display these and if others are interested and they come to the historical commission, please feel free to share our, our email or uh, ask them to uh, liaise with us because uh, we uh, uh, more working more hands working together, the quicker it'll get done. I think. Great, thanks. And I also mentioned that um, you know Anika and I spoke with the town assistant town manager and we're trying to get a site visit to see the tablet. So. Uh, right. next few weeks. So that'll be, um, try to be coordinated and um, your group is, you know, you're all welcome to attend. I think right. some of it is just to see the current condition of the tablets and then just to determine, I think once you see them too, it can help maybe, to, you know, with ideas for how they can be displayed. So. Sounds um, good. Yeah. Very good. Thank well, you. Thank you all. And I'll let you all close out your meeting. Thanks. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Okay. Are there any more public comments? Okay. So with no hands raised, we'll just close that part of the agenda. Um, I don't know of any unanticipated items. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I want an update on the writer's walk signs. I think the meeting's it's... over, Jan. No, it's not, Nate. We haven't, I'm usually the one who moves <laughs> to adjourn and I have not done that, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'll, um, I'll write to Anthony. And, uh, maybe you could write to Anthony too. He, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of projects that I need updated on. Um, so okay. my, you know, my understanding is that this, you know, we should have someone under contract, but I, I'm not sure we do. Because it was approved and he was going to issue the contract and he just hasn't. Is that what, where we, why we're waiting? 
Yeah, well, I think he said that there was a mistake in the procurement, so he needed to re-procure to re. He had to redo the re, the request for quotes, but that that's um, um, you know, but the documents are all ready, so it's just a matter of doing you know just re-soliciting the the documents again. So what's his last name? Delaney, D E L A N E Y. Yeah, I mean. I think I've, I've emailed, I've, I've discussed this with him and he knows it's a it's something that needs to happen. So I, I was under the impression that last week or a week and a half ago, he was gonna send those out again, but I'm not sure that they have been. So can I call him or is he not working in the town hall right now? He is, he's working. Okay, so I call the general planning department number or what number? No, he's in the accounting department. Accounting. Okay, I'll just call him directly. It's better than email, he can't ignore me then. <laughs> Don't warn him ahead. I won't. No, I yeah, I won't. You can, you can, you know. <laughs> and it's okay if I say I represent the historical commission. Jane, is that all right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think yeah. That I I would like that's yeah. I mean, I, he knows I've con I like I said I have like half a dozen projects with him that need to move forward. So it would be great to have someone else. You know. I, yeah, well, we don't just tell him this is my third term starting and we still haven't gotten these bloody things up and it can't be that hard to send out a couple contracts. I mean, I'll say it nicely, kind of. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous <laughs> at this point, right? So It is. Okay. And because it's all, you know, it's essentially done. I mean, we've, you know, we worked right. on the design, the locations. It's really just a matter of getting someone to make them and we have the website address. Have you given it to uh, the graphic designer to change on the mock-up? I'd have to look. There's been some emails back and forth. But I'm not sure it's ever been finalized. Okay, should I call him too? No, we have a meeting with Seth uh, to discuss a few projects. I forget when, but um, so he, I can move him in. Okay, make a note, mate. I'm writing it right now, I, I, just as you said that. In a red pen, <laughs> a highlighter. <laughs> okay. It's on yellow paper. It's, it's okay. I'll follow up with you. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So I think after that, I mean, some of it is at least for the bid. The bids are the bid documents are all set. It's just when we go to fabricate, we want to make sure everything is finalized. Right. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You all got a uh, an email from Ben this morning about a site visit to the company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't do it. I yeah, I was going to mention that. Other things. Yeah. yeah. So interesting, there are pieces of the fence still on the site. Um, yeah, they're in storage. I, I've received I received a picture of them, uh, and uh, they agreed to allow us to do like a site visit just to see the fence uh, pieces that are remaining. And then while I was on the phone with him, he mentioned, you know, the house itself is needs some work as well and he wouldn't appreciate if we could just like you know s show you know some of the deteriorating conditions of the house well, unless he's asking for demolition it doesn't apply to us they came to the historical commission sometime within the last three to five years um for uh their concerns about the about the condition of the house that we mm -hmm. I think, considered to be maintenance issues. You mean they were looking for CPAC funds? That's what they came for. Oh, okay. Originally. Well, you I think how many been... feet of the fence is left, approximately. Um, it looked like a few of like a few of the big posts uh, were remaining, and then um, some of the panels. Like, not very much. Not the very image, much. It almost looked like they disassembled it. So it doesn't look like they took it apart in panels or in sections. It almost looks like they mechanically or, you know, they maybe cut it out and then mm -hmm. kept pieces. I was mm -hmm. going to laugh, Jane, I was going to laugh because I spoke with them years ago too, the, someone from the condo association and they wanted to fix the roof a little bit. It didn't quite qualify for CPA, but at the time the fence had been hit by a a car and I said, well, you, we could fix the fence. And the con the condominium association was somewhat interested until there was a, you know, there was a mention of a preservation restriction on the property. So it, you know, I, my thought is the house has probably not been maintained. The mansard roof, I know they'd had trouble with and they wanted to remove the roof material and do something different. And, you know, so I'm not, you know, I, 
you know, I think there's probably a number of issues with the property, but I, I think the fence, hopefully they, if they're amenable, it'd be great. You know, this could be a CPA project to restore it or replicate it. I'm not sure what to, what to do with the house, but at least we have a site visit and um, we can see what's, what's left with the fence. I had a house once in Illinois in the 80s that had a very, very similar fence. It was an antique one that had been purchased and put there. Um, and it had been set up with um, brick spacers between like brick mm, piers that had been built in order to hold the pieces. But whatever, we had some sections that were in, that had rusted all the way through. And so we actually had it reconstructed the sections by just taking this pieces and having a mold made. Um, and then they pour, they literally poured them. Um, so I think it wouldn't be that hard to have it reconstructed, rebuilt. No, I agree. And I think if, um, you know, some of it is too, depending on if we had a good picture of the pieces, there are a few foundries that when smaller foundries close, you know, there's a few down south that took a lot of the uh, templates and a lot mm -hmm. of the old um, catalogs. And so, you know, when we uh, re, um, when we did the Dickinson family fence in the West Cemetery, I was able to find some information that, it, you know, I think it came out of um, Pittsfield. There was a fabricator out of Pittsfield. And so the catalog was actually a catalog. It was, they ordered it out of a catalog back then. And yeah. it's such a nice fence, but back then it was from, you know, there was a foundry that did that. And so, uh, with if Marconi House, I, I don't know if we could, if we had enough information, it's like if we did some digging or had a few conservators look at it, if they would be able to identify where they think we could, if there's a mold even existing mm -hmm. of it. Um, but I agree, there's, it looks like there's enough material at least to get um, some of it molded. It looks like there's a railing, a post, and a, like a baluster, so you could almost take it from there. Great, almost like they saved it on purpose for that. Are we, are, so are, is, is the aspiration to consider a project for CPA funds? I mean, if you found a fabricator, would that be the direction? I'm just asking because that wouldn't, that wouldn't qualify. If you're recreating it, you can't. Uh, well, we'd have to get an opinion from town council on that and see. <laughs> <laughs> the town attorney. <laughs> yeah, right. I think that actually does squarely fall under create. That really would be the perfect example of. Or is it present? Add some pieces. It would be create. I mean, or is it rehabilitation? Yeah, I mean, it's I'm not rehabilitation not... if you're creating something new. But we can have that discussion another I time. <laughs> out of a mold <laughs> of the exist, out of a mold of the existing fence. I think there's examples of that being done. Okay. Especially if you use those pieces in it and attach them to the new, right? You're just restoring. Well, like I said, we can have a discussion another day. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if the owners would be willing, uh, you know, for right. whatever reason, you know, it's been, Ben's been speaking with the property manager, but the owners have not been in communication. So I don't know if they're reluctant or they're just not, you know, have been um, looped in, but. Right. Okay, I move to adjourn the meeting. A second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Lovely Aye. seeing you all. Thanks, nice everyone. to see you. Stay well. Oh, uh, Nate, question uh, before you go. Uh, 9.15 on Friday is the site visit. Is anybody going? I I can't go. Uh, I communicated that to Ben just yeah. asking.